There is an entire world of particular plumbing happening below you every time you flush the john. And it's mostly unrelated to the 2006 animated film Flushed Away, unless you happen to live with a well-dressed rat. From the first flush to wastewater cleaning, the entire process is an intricate and fascinating tale that surprisingly keeps us connected to the rest of the natural world. So, today we're exploring all the strange and interesting things that happen after you flush a toilet. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, feel free to leave a comment and let us know what other civil engineering processes you want to hear about. Okay, somebody find me a good pair of rubber gloves. Have you ever flushed a toilet, let us finish, and wondered what happens behind the scenes? It's like trying to understand why your luggage goes on vacation without you during a flight. It's a bit of a mystery. Flushing a toilet seems like a pretty simple thing, for most people anyway. It does become a little trickier in gas station restrooms the further away they are from the highway. But the initial flush is only the beginning of a longer process. After that, it's like a mini water park ride. Except instead of inner tubes, it's inner tubes. That right there was a joke, everybody. When you flush, a lever pulls up a flapper that causes the water to rush from the tank into the bowl. When the bowl is full, it overflows past a certain point in the S-bend pipe on the back of the toilet, causing all the contents to drain down the pipe. Still with us? Okay, good. The initial flush makes another valve open on the top of the tank, allowing water to flow back inside through an inlet valve. As water flows back in, a rubber ball rises, causing it to stop once the tank is full. All in a day's work for a hard-working toilet. You should maybe consider tipping it next time. So, you probably have some idea what happens to the water in your porcelain throne after you pull the make it go away lever. Basically, it goes into the sewer, right? Well, sort of, and sometimes. When the water goes down the pipe, the waste will travel to different places, depending on your area. If you live in a city or a suburb, the wastewater travels through the city's sewage system, past the fatbergs, rats, morlocks, and turtles being raised by rats to be crime-fighting superheroes, eventually ending at a wastewater treatment plant. Cowabunga. In more rural areas, houses are most likely connected to an underground septic tank buried on the property. And as odd as it is having your own waste hanging around your home, it's not as strange as what happens when something weird gets flushed down a toilet connected to a sewer system. Sometimes, people like to flush things that are definitely not human waste, whether accidentally or on purpose. We're looking at you, YouTubers taking the fat flush challenge. Things like keys, iPhones, and even baseball bats sometimes take a watery roller coaster ride. Really? Baseball bats. Eh, maybe they ate it first. The first stop is the wastewater treatment center, where everything that isn't supposed to be there meets a series of different filters. Sturdy metal screens block solids like golf balls, rags, and crime scene evidence from going further. Next, there's a grit chamber, where smaller, grittier solids like dirt get blocked. And uh, any other fine-grained solids you may have had to frantically throw down the john like Lorraine Bracco in Goodfellas. In the end, all that flushed out and filtered gunk earns a trip to the landfill, bringing an end to their underground adventure. Filtering isn't the only thing that happens at the wastewater treatment plant. There is a lot of gross stuff in wastewater, including the more natural sludge and scum, the uninvited guests at the sewer cast party. We're guessing our invitation got lost, probably in the sewer. To get rid of this unwanted gunk, water goes through a process known as primary clarification, which also sounds like a 90s legal thriller starring Richard Gere. In primary clarification, the heaviest gunk sinks to the bottom, which becomes sludge. The lightest gunk, scum, rises to the top. That's right, sludge and scum are technical terms, so be sure you're using the correct one if you find yourself speaking to a water treatment worker. After that, they're easily removed from the water. But that's not even close to where the scum and sludge train ends. Choo-choo. All right, guess that would be poo-poo. The next stop is the digester tanks at the treatment plant. There, bacteria go all Pac-Man on the stuff, breaking it down into other organic materials. Methane, carbon dioxide, water, and more concentrated sludge, to be exact. At least they don't have to worry about blinking ghosts. 
But even that's not the end of the line for these byproducts. The methane gets used as an energy source for the plant, which is a smelly but efficient way to go green. As for the concentrated sludge, it goes through a merry-go-round ride, through a centrifuge, to be separated into biosolids that are later used as fertilizer. Now that is some useful sh**. Now oh, come on, you've got to believe that one. That is a solid pun. Uh, what a waste. After removing the majority of the sludge, wastewater still has a long journey ahead of it. An unexpectedly long journey, to paraphrase J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit on you. After all, what is Mount Doom if not a giant fiery toilet? During the activated sludge process, an exciting name, we know, water transfers to aeration tanks to get loaded with oxygen which sounds like something someone with more than one pair of yoga pants does on the weekends. This spurs bacteria growth, which, contrary to what you might think, actually helps clean the water. You see, the bacteria loves to chow down on organic waste. Think about organic waste like a chipotle burrito bowl, which may or may not be a stretch for you, depending on how you feel about chipotle. The bacteria in the activated sludge process absolutely houses that burrito bowl and then goes back for seconds with quadruple guac. That's how much bacteria loves it. After enjoying a buffet of organic waste, the bacteria continue to multiply, resulting in material called flock, which might sound vaguely sinister, but is merely a loosely clumped mass of fine particles. At long last, the wastewater's journey is finished, and we can finally say the sludge stops here. Although the sludge cleaning process proves the circle of life is kind of gross, no matter how powerfully the Lion King painted it, it's a big part of keeping our water clean. Following these primary and secondary treatments, 90% of the water's pollutants are gone. But that last 10% still needs to go. The solution? Disinfectant. But not just any old disinfectant. It takes a lot more than a can of Lysol and a prayer to decontaminate wastewater until it's safe enough to return to the environment. According to the CDC, water gets disinfected by adding chlorine, chloramine, and chlorine dioxide to it. It's like creating a pristine swimming pool in the treatment plant. Although, please keep in mind that it is not actually a swimming pool. So don't bring your trunks if your class takes a field trip to a treatment plant. The chlorine kills the remaining bacteria, removing most of the organic and inorganic matter. The safe water then gets released back into the system and local waterways. But don't worry, it'll be back. Now that we've seen what happens to wastewater in the city, it's time to dig a hole in the old backyard and take a look at septic tanks. Just uh, be careful where you stick the shovel. A septic tank is an interesting thing. Most commonly found in rural areas, it's a miniature self-contained sewage system on your own property, usually sitting around 10 to 20 feet from the house. Much like a hidden force operating underground, the septic tank diligently deals with waste and prevents any unpleasant surprises. So the septic tank is the impossible mission force of household waste management. Let's hope it never goes rogue. But the magical world of septic tanks isn't just for rural dwellers. Some city homes also have embraced the perks of having their own powerful waste treatment ally. In the wonderful world of septic tanks, you won't find the same techniques used in wastewater treatment plants. Instead, the hero here is gravity. Thanks, Sir Isaac Newton. Love your fig cookies. As time goes by, gravity simply and gently pulls the sludge down, guiding it to settle at the bottom. Meanwhile, the scum rises to claim its place at the top. Great job, scum. Please don't make fig cookies. Now, caught in the middle, the water is relatively clean and ready to embark on its next adventure, which happens to be the VIP treatment of getting released into the septic tank drain field, an underground area made of unsaturated soil. The resulting water, known as effluent, isn't as clean as water that goes through a treatment plant, but that isn't always a bad thing. The effluent, which is full of organic materials, acts as a fertilizer. And you don't have to be a matchmaker to know what happens when fertilizer meets grass. If you have a septic tank and see an area in the yard where the grass is always thicker and greener, that's probably where your drain field lies. So be sure to delight your guests with that fun fact at your next barbecue. The green grass from effluent isn't always a good sign, though. Plumbers often warn that if you see a remarkable shade of green in the area near or around your tank, it could be the sign of a stressed septic system that may fail during times of wetter weather. So if you notice your lawn getting unusually lush, your septic tank's impossible mission force may have been disavowed. 
Now, gravity is great for clearing out most of a septic tank's sludge. But occasionally, there's just too much for it to handle. When the sludge gets too high in the tank, like Arnold Schwarzenegger working through some stress, you gotta pump it out. So, get to the crapper! Most septic tanks only need to be cleared every three years, but it can vary. People can also add special chemicals to keep their septic tanks clean. Of course, the best thing to do is to get your septic tank checked each year. After all, you wouldn't want to see or smell what happens when something ruptures. Unless you're a fan of staph infections and homemade slip and slides. So what do you think? Will you ever look at a toilet the same way again? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.